Like the problem. Well, I think, church, I, like I said, I think he's trying to present a sort of, you know, muscular Christianity of like, right, I'm going to show them we're not all these Ned Flanders guys. We can be Chads. We can be aggressive. We can be testosterone fueled. Okay, stuff, so where do which you is, get all these which, guys? Which is fine. Where are you send all these guys? But, but how is it? But, but how is it attractive? Right? How is that going to attract in the average guy who's just sort of shagging around and ch- kind of having a good time? And then he's like, well, this guy's calling me a degenerate, and he's saying I hate God and I'm going to burn in hell. So, like, where, you know, where's the where's the carrot? You know, we've got enough of the stick. Well, where's even the carrot? If, even if you could convince them though where do you send them to well yeah that's the other thing there was a good the majority question for of the churches are all feminists there was a really good question for paul here uh paul would you choose a man you're not attracted to or stay single forever I'd probably stay single I, <gasps> yeah i just i just think that's like torch i don't think that's fair to the guy mm. would you want someone to like marry you like that's not attracted to you it would no like it'd I, just be a disaster, yeah like i it? just think that's not fair to like to the guy i wouldn't want to be with someone that's not attracted to me like i feel i don't know that's how i feel about it that would just be a disaster though wouldn't it over the it's long funny. Term, people I mean. in the chat don't think i'm married you guys both met my wife so i mean i don't gotta prove anything to those guys yeah yeah it's funny well, what, okay, what about the argument about sex before marriage then? Because on that show that we were looking at, for, that whatever show, right? So Destiny mm. was there. They were, you know, ironically with Melina. I mean, see how that turned yeah. out. But anyway, so they were, up there. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, you know, so I'm not sure he's the right person for, you know, marriage advice either. Yeah. But, you know, they were going backwards and forwards. And basically Chase was saying, no, you should remain, you know, a virgin before you marry and you guys should experience sex together for the first time. Destiny was making yeah. the point. You've got to try before you buy, basically, because you don't know if you're sexually compatible with the person before you, you know, you, you before you've actually had sex. I mm. kind of agree with Destiny there because I sort of feel like you don't know, right? And if you're actually going to commit to this person for you know decades, the rest of your life, surely you've got it. Surely it makes sense to at least have, know if you're physically compatible or not, because that does vary. Well, we have to understand, like we we're looking at marriage and everything from two different spheres, right? From a, from a biblical sphere, marriage is not a contract, it's a covenant, and it's a covenant that you make with God. So there's more like weight of conviction in doing so. Um, today, we look at marriage as more of a contract action, it's a transactional, right? So when it comes to sex, just because we think that, because I would say, if I wasn't a Christian, I would agree with you. I'd be like, yeah, I wanna, I wanna test the merchandise before I buy this. I'm not sure if I want this. But what if it doesn't work right? You know, what if it's defected? I don't want this something defected. But according to the Bible, it says no. You withstand from marriage. You withstand from sexual immorality, and you have sex only in the what? confines of marriage. Yeah. So yeah. And, and so it's just like, who do you? Well, regardless I, of what we think, we have to either say, well, do we want to obey this, or are we going to do our own thing? Well, I think it's like more of men finding a solution. Um, it's because it's like. You know, men were sick of wasting their time, money, and resources on women that would just stop sleeping with them after marriage. And they got yeah. together and they said, how can we tell if a woman's actually attracted to us? And they said, three dates, tops. But, but, I, mean, I mean, I've heard one. I've heard, like, you know. But, yeah. but they said, you know, stop spending your money, time, and resources on women that aren't sleeping with you. If yeah. she's not sleeping with you, it's with someone else. And for most women, you know, that's that's true. There's exceptions, but they don't make the rule. Yeah, and, 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 and the other thing is as well, I mean, there is a big contingent of guys who, who do just want to have casual sex. And I mean, we're kind of... I, no. I, I, <laughs> I'm sorry to break it to you, no! Paul. I'm sorry to break it to you, Paul. Um, there, may, you know, them... There's a lot of Christian guys that enjoy casual sex too. Well, okay, so so here's a question, Glenn. So is it is it the case that maybe you that Chase and maybe you as well are actually, you're advocating quite a, a sort of h- hardcore version of Christianity? Is there not a slightly more... Is there not a more water? Oh, sorry, no, water no, I'm not, is there not, I'm is there, not. Is there not a milder version where I could say, "Look, I'm going out there. Yeah, maybe I'm sleeping with different people. I'm not married, but I'm not harming anybody. I'm leaving them. You know, I'm trying to give them the best type of experience they can thing. have. I'm, I'm being very cal- for... kind to them, etc. Isn't that? Couldn't that be regarded as being good in a Christian sense? I'm not is... advocating for anything mm. other than, hey, this is what the Bible says. Right. You could you could choose to live it the way it, you want or not. That's not my. It's not my place to tell you you're wrong. I'm just knowing what how I gotta live and live yeah. my life, and I'm not telling you what you're doing is wrong. The Bible tells you it's doing wrong. I'm not saying hey, yo, you're wrong. You're wrong. I'm not saying that. Mm. The Bible says it. And if you say I'm a Christian, then you should look at the Bible and be able to see that that's what it says too, right? I'm not judging you. 
Like, that's not my place. Chase is judging. And I'm not I'm advocating for a hardcore thing. I'm just saying, hey, if you're a Christian or if you're a church, why aren't you practicing the Bible according to the way that it's written? Why are you practicing these other interpretations of it? You know, and that's the difference. Like, there's no watered down version of God. Yeah. You know, there's just not. Either we accept what it is and try to do our best to live by it, knowing that even the best of us are going to fail at it, all right? And, and you know, have to live with our mistakes. And that's fine. That's all I'm doing. Like, I'm, I'm, I know I'm going to fail. You know what? I'm probably going to sin, like, at least a thousand times a day. I'm going to cuss somebody out. Mm. And, you know, I'm, you know, I'm going to look at a nice piece of ass that walks by me, all right? And, or there's going to be some real big old titties that are going to catch me staring at them. I'm going to sin when I go to the gym. Like, I'm going to look, and I'm going to see some booty, and that's it. Like, and then you're going to be on a TikTok. That, you're going to be one of those exactly. TikToks, aren't you? Look at that guy with the shades. But, but it's creeping like, on you know, me. what do I do? I, I repent, ask God to help me work on these areas, and I just don't do anything about it. Like, I, I, don't, I don't act on these things. Yeah. But that's my own personal walk. That's not, I'm not here to judge you. So how do you know if sex with someone is good or bad? Could be someone else's previous experience has made someone see bad at sex well, in that context. Yeah, that's why I think traditional like relationships are kind of reserved for people under the age of like 22-ish. Mm. I think it's going to I think it's going to be difficult after that. You know, I have a friend that's 30 years old and he's actually a Chad dude. Like he he's in he's in Florida um and he's a virgin, Christian by choice. Yeah. Um actually remember I think I told you Pro wanted to put him on a dating show. One of your dating shows. Oh, okay, I, the red, the red pill bachelor could be my next yeah, one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, his name's Mike Mulvaney. Mm -hmm. Um, he, he's part of the Iron Disciples. Rolo mentioned them before. Iron um, Disciples. And and it's like, he he's he's doing it by choice. He didn't fall into mm -hmm. temptation. Mm -hmm. I mean, if anybody right. if anybody has a better place to speak on this thing, it's not well, Chase. It'll be Mike. Yeah. Well, there's <laughs> there's exceptions, but it doesn't make the rule. You know what I mean? No, yeah. So I just say in general, like under the age of like 22, you know, I mean, you could yeah. ma like maybe people will do the waiting till marriage thing. I think you're going to have problems over that because the w woman's typically not going to be a virgin. I think that leads like a lot of times with the born again stuff, you you see women you know, they marry guys they're not attracted to because, you know, it was easy for them to sleep with the last guy, but the next guy, you know, well, why are you able to wait? Usually it's because, you know, I, there's exceptions, but that's I don't really see, like, genuine burning desire in the church of women that just, like, listen to their husbands, obey him yeah. and all things. I, I don't really, well, I don't see it often. I guess it goes well, back. it's not even encouraged and it's not even taught. Yeah. So you I guess it goes back it. To, the, to the same point, though, because the church has shrunk. You know, it's just not as big a population as it was. There's probably just not enough decent prospects to go around. It's not like back in the day when everyone in the, lo in the village went to the church. Yeah. It was like, you know everyone was on the same page now you're probably you've got a rag bag of you know people to choose from and it's probably not that great i feel half naked says <laughs> even if you're physically compatible you're probably not emotionally on the same wavelength and you're not go you're going to get bored with having sex with the same one i don't know about that really i think the pro I, I mean another another issue which we haven't touched on at all is the idea of monogamy and whether long-term monogamy is really i don't want to say natural but is it how feasible is it in today's world that's another problem isn't it because yeah, we I mean, are all think... like beset with temptation, aren't we? Well, you there's know? there's no evidence that anyone's really. I mean, because true monogamy is two virgins getting married and staying together for life. So, I I don't really yeah. see that ever. So no, yeah, I mean, you, you got to remember, like the way that we do divorce today was not the way that they did divorce before. Mm. So monogamy before, I mean, it was kind of forced upon them. They didn't have a way out. Well, that yeah. That's the thing. So, so like, that's why, like, you, we look at this. Oh, it's so successful back then. No, they couldn't get out of it back then. <laughs> yeah, but that's what the that's what these dudes would want back, though, well, isn't it? That's what they. Th no, and a lot of these women, there's like court, <laughs> there's like court documents from the 1800s of men complaining about getting screwed over by their opera singer wives, yeah. and they're like yeah. still getting money from him. So it's like even if the laws change, you, there's still a whole gynocentric leaning. Even, if, Even they... if the laws change, you can't if you can't change the fact that people are going to be behave the way they want to behave. Yeah. Well, I think yeah, and like you said, even back in the day, I, there was infidelities were going on. Oh, there yeah. was all kinds of shit was happening, right? And um, 
The problem is we are kind of battling, as, as much as Chase would deny it, we are kind of battling against biology here a bit, aren't we? Because the biological urge is, certainly for dudes, let's be honest, is to, is to go out and bang lots of strange. I mean, that's just how, kind of how it is. And, and yeah, you can and choose to not do that, but you are fighting against your nature. And I think even for women, right? I mean, women also, you know, they, they are programmed, you know, hypergamy to go for the highest value dude. So, okay, she's with some guy now, he's a bit of a chump, and then some super high value dude walks in. She's going to look at him, right? She's gonna, and if there's an opportunity there, she might, she might act on that. So this yeah, is all it, about people making, either making a conscious choice not to act on their biological urges or being forced to by the consequences of the law. Well, it, it's more about the fact that, like, what the church fails to do, what the Red Pill does really good, is educate men on these, these be patterns of behavior. Yeah. Right? And the church doesn't acknowledge these things. Women are angels. They're saints. They're, they're, they're perfect little creatures, right? <laughs> you know, like, no, they can make cake with their big tits. What do you do? What are you complaining about? Oh, Why yeah. are you looking at her tits in the begin with? You lustful dog, you. Like, you know, that's how they look at it. So what the, what the red pill does is that it teaches men, hey, guess what? Men and women are both flawed. And this is their, their nature. And this is how you, sh you can uh, observe this nature and then you choose to act on it how you see fit. Mm. Yeah. Why can't the church embrace that aspect? It doesn't. They want you got Chase wanting to burn the whole thing down. 